thank you, precious Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ and Father God, for this wonderful and beautiful day you have cre created. Let us rejoice and be glad in it and celebrate you and praise you all day. I ask that you would release us from any hypocrisy or any sin that easily entangles us. Free us from anything that holds us back from our relationship with you and for living a life of holiness that honours you. Heal us from any selfishness, Father God, any self-centeredness, any pride. Let us be humble servants of you, Lord, and humble servants of other people. Convict us today, challenge us today as we read your word. Open our eyes and ears and hearts and minds and be blessed as we live our lives for you, my Lord. In your precious name I pray. Amen. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 13. About this time, Jesus was informed that Pilate had murdered some people from Galilee as they were offering sacrifices at the temple. Do you think those Galileans were worse sinners than all the other people from Galilee? Jesus asked. Is that why they suffered? Not at all, and you will perish too, unless you repent of your sins and turn to God. And what about the 18 people who died when the tower in Siloam fell on them? Were they the worst sinners in Jerusalem? No, and I tell you again, that unless you repent, you will perish too. Then Jesus told this story. A man planted a fig tree in his garden and came again and again to see if there was any fruit on it. But he was always disappointed. Finally, he said to his gardener, I've waited three years and there hasn't been a single fig. Cut it down. It's just taken up space in the garden. The gardener answered, Sir, give it one more chance. Leave it another year and I'll give it special attention and plenty of fertiliser. If we get figs next year, fine. If not, then you can cut it down. One Sabbath day, as Jesus was teaching in a synagogue, he saw a woman who had been crippled by an evil spirit. She had been bent double for 18 years and was unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Dear woman, you are healed of your sickness. Then he touched her and instantly she could stand straight. How she praised God. But the leader in charge of the synagogue was indignant that Jesus had healed her on the Sabbath day. There are six days of the week for working, he said to the crowd. Come on those days to be healed, not on the Sabbath. But the Lord replied, You hypocrites, each of you works on the Sabbath day. Don't you untie your ox or your donkey from its stall on the Sabbath and lead it out for water? This dear woman, a daughter of Abraham, has been held in bondage by Satan for 18 years. Isn't it right that she be released even on the Sabbath? This shamed his enemies, but all the people rejoiced at the wonderful things he did. Then Jesus said, What is the kingdom of God like? How can I illustrate it? It is like a tiny mustard seed that a man planted in a garden. It grows and becomes a tree, and the birds make nests in its branches. He also asked, What else is the kingdom of God like? It is like the yeast a woman used in making bread. Even though she put only a little yeast in three measures of flour, it permeated every part of the dough. Jesus went through the towns and villages, teaching as he went, always pressing on toward Jerusalem. Someone asked him, Lord, 
Will only a few be saved? He replied. Work hard to enter the narrow door to God's kingdom, for many will try to enter but will fail. When the master of the house has locked the door, it will be too late. You will stand outside, knocking and pleading, Lord, open the door for us. But he will reply, I don't know you or where you come from. Then you will say, but we ate and drank with you and you taught in our streets. And he will reply, I tell you, I don't know you or where you come from. Get away from me, all you who do evil. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, for you will see Abraham, Isaac, Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God. But you will be thrown out. And people will come from all over the world, from east and west, north and south, to take their places in the kingdom of God. And note this, some who seem least important now will be the greatest then, and some who are the greatest now will be least important then. At that time, some Pharisees said to him, Get away from here if you want to live. Herod Antipas wants to kill you. Jesus replied, Go, tell that fox that I will keep on casting out demons and healing people today and tomorrow, and the third day I will accomplish my purpose. Yes, today, tomorrow, and the next day I must proceed on my way, for it wouldn't do for a prophet of God to be killed except in Jerusalem. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones God's messengers. How often I have wanted to gather you children, your children, together as a hen protects her chicks beneath her wings. But you wouldn't let me. And now look, your house is abandoned. And you will never see me again until you say blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, Father, I praise you for these words. I love the parable of the, the small tiny mustard seed, which grows into the biggest tree, and the story about the small amount of yeast permeating the whole, whole dough. Thank you, Father, that you start from the smallest. Thank you that you start from the most humblest, my Lord. Sometimes we overlook those that we might automatically see as weaker and to pay more attention to the more visibly strong. But I thank you that your kingdom is upside down and you choose the least of this world to shame the strong. You use the people that may be overlooked to have a huge impact. I praise you for that, my Lord. Thank you that your kingdom starts from the humble and the small. Ah, and my Lord, I pray that we wouldn't be hypocritical. Like the Pharisees, who were religious and kept tried to keep their religious practices whilst failing to care for those that were suffering and poor and in need. It's a shame on us if we ignore the plight of others and sit there uttering religious stuff. Help us to be truly the people of God, not just reading the word or doing the spiritual disciplines, but actively showing your love to others. It's a challenge to all of us, my Lord. It really is. I praise you, my Lord Jesus, and I thank you for the emotion and the love that you had. Jesus, it was such a painful thing for you when you spoke over Jerusalem at the end of this chapter. The fact that your people were rejecting you. The fact that you knew that they weren't turning to you and believing your message. 
But you loved them and you prayed for them. And I know you wanted to gather the people of Jerusalem under you in your arms. Jesus, I thank you that you are real. You are a person. You are God as well. You have feelings. You have key feelings. You care. Help us, Jesus. Oh, help us, Father God. Oh, help us, Holy Spirit. We can't be the people that you want us to be by ourselves. We can be so full of pride and we can so easily forget humility. Please help us. Please help us. Well, not to be arrogant or conceited, but to glow for you like Stephen did before he was stoned, like Moses did when he came down from Mount Sinai. Let us glow for you, Jesus, I pray. In your precious name, I pray these things. Amen.